Welcome back to Black News Tonight as we explore the black world across the diaspora. Ethiopia brought in a new year over the weekend as Africa's second most populous nation follows a different calendar than what the U.S. goes by and many other nations. The Ethiopian calendar begins in September and marks its years differently than the commonly used Gregorian calendar as Saturday marked the first day of 2014 for Ethiopians. Joining me now to shed light on the Ethiopian calendar and so much more is Ethiopian American philosopher, author, and leading member of Ethiopian Royal Congress, Ted Le Malaku, who holds the official title of Lij, which is reserved for an Ethiopian royal as it is an aristocratic hereditary title uh, given to male descendants of kings, princes, and the nobility. So this is an honor to have you on the show, my brother. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now, first question, guys. Did I, I feel like I mispronounced Lij. How do you pronounce it? No, you actually pronounced it correctly. It's Lij. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Sometimes you can strike <laughs> a straight lick with a crooked stick, as my grandmama said. So what's the history and significance of the Ethiopian calendar? And, and what's the breakdown of the calendar and, and its cycle? Okay, so uh, first, I'd like to say thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's also an honor for me. Uh, uh, and uh, well, the Ethiopian calendar, it's very important to understand the background and the historical and uh, significant the significance of it. Uh, first of all, it's a very ancient calendar. Uh, it dates to uh, early antiquity. Uh, it, it has very um, uh, s similar features to the ancient Egyptian calendar. Uh, that's no surprise because uh, ancient Egypt and uh, ancient Ethiopia were uh, closely connected. Uh, they um, shared a lot in common. Uh, but uh, the most important um, aspect of it <clears throat> is that uh, we have historians uh, from antiquity that talk about uh, Ethiopia and Ethiopians uh, as being the pioneers of the science of the stars. Uh, for example, you have uh, historians like Diodorus Siculus uh, in his Library of Histories, uh, uh, who says that uh, the calendar of the Egyptians and also the uh, astronomy of the Egyptians uh, was uh, taken from the ancient Ethiopians. Now, this is not common knowledge in our time, but in ancient times, uh, this uh, seems to be common uh, to have been common knowledge. And we also have historians, other historians uh, from the 19th century, uh, like uh, Count Constantine de Volney, for example, who said, and I quote, the Ethiopians, says Lucian, uh, were the first who uh, invented the science of the stars and gave names to the planets, not at random and without meaning, but descriptive of the qualities which they conceived them to possess. And it was from them that this art passed still in an imperfect state to the Egyptians. And this is in the Ruins and the Law of Nature, Meditation on the Revolutions of Empires by Const Count Constantine Francois de Volnay. So now with this background, we have to understand that uh, uh, in progression, still in antiquity, Ethiopia adopted Christianity uh, circa, well, in early uh, uh, Christianity, basically, uh, some 1700, 1800 years uh, ago. So since that time, there were many uh, things that were adopted into the calendar, but the calendar existed uh, since early antiquity, way before the time of Christ. Now with this background, it's important to add that uh, there are features in the Ethiopian calendar that are very different from the Gregorian calendar, for example, and other uh, world calendars like the Hebrew calendar, the Julian uh, calendar, uh, and so on. So the Ethiopian calendar divides the year into 13 months. So we have 12 months that have 30 days, and then there's an additional uh, epigominal month. It's a month that uh, consists of five days. This is one uh, feature that's different from what we know. Uh... Um, and also, yeah, um, uh, the the Ethiopian calendar also starts the year in September. So September 11, uh, unfortunately, here in America, it, it's that day is remembered uh, as uh, a terrible uh, day. And uh, but but that's an important so. point, right? I mean, 
Yeah. That, that's an important point. In the United States, we tend to look at things through the lens of our own culture and our own experience. And when you yeah. center yourself uh, and you center the West and you center the United States and you don't and you look at everyone else through that lens, everyone else is, of course, not going to measure up because you're trying to retrofit their culture into your culture. So, for example, you know, someone could say, oh, those Ethiopians were over there celebrating on 9-11. And it's like, well, yeah, because it had nothing to do with the World Trade Center. It had to do with a centuries long uh, commitment to honoring the new year, which happens to begin in, in September. Uh, and, and your breakdown of Christianity, the Egyptian solar uh, system and so, solar calendar is, is so important. I think one question people want to know is, you know, just quite simply, how is it celebrated? Oh, what do you how do? is the new year celebrated? Yeah, how do you bring in a new, you know, I remember being in, uh, I think I was in Bethlehem one year, or, no, I was in Nazareth, no, I was in Bethlehem, uh, during Coptic, during, uh, uh, where they were celebrating Coptic Christian, there were a bunch of Ethiopians in, in, in Israel who were celebrating, and watching their Christmas celebration and sort of how they commemorated Christmas was so different than how I had seen Western folk do it. And so I understood that there's just different rites and different rituals and different practices that, are, that go on. And so I, I wondered with the new year, like, what does the Ethiopian new year look like? I'm sure it's not like a ball dropping from the sky and people, you know, standing outside with Dick Clark. So, so what does it look like? Well, uh, the, well it's mostly celebrated uh, with uh, family members. So right before, prior to uh, the day of celebration, um, well, about half of the country is Orthodox Christian. And uh, uh, in the Orthodox uh, Christian Church, as you may know, um, has different uh, fasts and uh, different rituals. And there's a fast that takes place right before the New Year. So when the on the day of New Year is when also you break the fast. That It's a fast that uh, takes place for only a few days. So um, when that happens uh, on the day of New Year, most of, uh, uh, well, the main celebration is with family, uh, eating, uh, drinking honey wine, which we call pej. Um, and there are uh, uh, also uh, children uh, who bring uh, these uh, flowers. <laughs> Uh, uh, and the days called in Kutatash, that's what we call it. So it's 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 very uh, um, uh, home based and family oriented uh, of a celebration. I love that. As to, yeah, like going out and uh, and uh, yeah, so it's more home, uh, like staying home with your family. It's more like that. Well, I, well, I got to tell you, uh, your 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 highness, uh, I. Love to invite myself over to people's house. I already got an invitation to Patty LaBelle's crib. She's going to make me some mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. Next September, I'm telling you now, uh, I will be at your home uh, for some honey wine. I will be at your home I for will. some injera. I, I want some tibs. I want some yodoro wat. I want some yelkit wat. We're going to get busy at uh, for, for celebrate New Year. Not because I'm greedy, but because I want to experience a different cultural tradition. How's that sound? It would be my pleasure to have you for New Year next year. Oh, man, you ain't said nothing but a word. I will see you, and thank you for joining me so much on Black News tonight. Ah, almost got a goodbye in there. We'll see you after.